Hey everybody, so in this video, which is a continuation of the Linux fundamentals course, what we're going to do is we're going to go over some networking and the commands that I generally use for networking in Rocky Linux or RHEL versions. So let's take a look at, first of all, let's take a look at ping. Ping is a good one to, to start with. Everybody is familiar with ping. So if we do 10.10.200.1, which is our gateway, there you can see it. So it pings, it starts pinging, and it's just going to keep going. It's never going to stop. So that's a difference between Linux and Windows. Windows, it stops after 4. So if we hit Control-C, that'll stop this, and then you'll get a... Nice little output of 13 packets, 13 received. So if you ping something that is not pingable, we're just going to say we ping 10, 10, 100.1, which should not be a pingable. This is what it's going to look like. It's not going to, it's not going to output any information. It's just going to sit here, no return. So you're going to be waiting a long time if you're just sitting here, you're just thinking, what is it doing? But all you have to do, hit control C. That means it's not pinging and you'll see 20 packets transmitted, zero received, hundred percent packet loss, packet loss. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, if you want to do ping dash C four ten dot ten dot two hundred dot one. What that will do is that will make it look just like Windows. And if we do 100, it'll do its pings. And it should stop. Yeah, I guess it, it does not. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So it was just taking some time. Is allowing it to time out so each one so yeah so that, that's a way to do it you could do ping dash c4 if you want it to be like windows normally i would just do a ping see if it's up see if it's responding okay so that is ping let's go and do ip so let's look at the ip so ip if we just type ip this will give you the commands and the options, IP address. There's many, many different commands here. Uh, the ones I like, IP address, IP route. So in Linux, you used to use if config. If config is no longer even on here. I wonder if we can download if config. Uh, sudo. DNF what provides if config. Let's see. So we could download net tools and if you still wanted to use if config, let's let's do that. Sudo DNF install net tools dash y so we're going to allow it to install it all right so now net tools now we can type if config and there you can see so if config this is what used to be used on almost all Linux distributions. There's the INET4, IPv4, IPv6. This is a loopback. This is the Ethernet port. So to get similar information though, you would type IP adder. This gives you very, very similar information. In fact, here it is 10, 10, 200.90 slash 24 broadcast and this is the name of the ethernet adapter so this is what you're going to use ip 
ADDR IP adder. That's a good command to get the information. You can change the IP if you want it to using that command. Okay. Let's look now at the default route. So if we want to know what the default route is, we can type IP route. Yes, and that will show us the default route right here, default via 1010 200.1, and that's what we were pinging earlier. So that's going out this device. So that's the default route right there. Normally you don't have to change the default route as long as you have it set correctly. But there you can if you need to. You can set other routes if you have a, a number of Ethernet interfaces. You can you could route however you'd like if you have it connected to different networks. And you may want to do that if you're if you're setting up some kind of firewall or something of that nature. Okay. Let's look at trace route. Okay, so trace route is also not here. Pseudo. So this is a good command to know what provides if you're looking for a certain command. DNF install trace route. So the what provides real nice, real nice command gives you what's what package it's contained in and a little description of what it does. Okay, so we've we've installed trace route. So we can trace route, let's trace route to Google DNS. And this is going to tell us where this is going to go. So right here you can see it goes out the gateway. And it's using TTL. And in Linux, by default, I believe it uses UDP rather than ICMP. So it's just decrementing the TTL and then, then it gets back the information and sends out three packets. I, I have a video on how traceroute works. So if you, if you're interested in that, please watch that one. So it goes to 200.1, which is our gateway. 192, 168.3.1 is our firewall interface. And then out onto our internet, 70 10 10 9 to 27 10 10 50 and then traverses right here hits a nat right there and that's still an evng and then it goes out into my lan that's my lan's default gateway and then it's it's out on the real internet and then it gets to 8.8.8 .8 .8. So trace route's a nice command if you want to know the path that it's following. And if you get something like this, it means it's not responding. That hop, that router is not responding. It's not sending back any information. So you're going to see some of those. Sometimes you'll see a lot of those. All right, so that's that's trace route. Uh, let's go into dig. So dig is used with DNS, and we don't have that either. So dig is contained in the bind utils. So let's install that. Okay.
It's going to take a few seconds here. So dig is used for DNS, for looking up DNS records. It's it's a, really it's good to know this one. So this will come in handy when you're troubleshooting a DNS issue. So here here's what we can do. We can do dig google.com. And here's what it returns, right? It returns the a record for google.com, one of many. There you go, google.com. You can so you can run that. Uh, you could also return. You can check a certain DNS server by doing the at, and there. So now we're going to go and we're asking 4.2.2.2 to return us google.com. We could also return www.google.com. So if we want to do a MX record, if we want to know, know what their mail record is, we can do dig and then put in MX. And we just want to do google.com. And there you go smtp.google.com. So good way to check if you want to look at their text records. Here you can see, so you can see SPF include, that's their SPF record, DocuSign, Apple domain verification. So you can kind of see what they're using, what the site is using. Facebook domain, WebEx domain verification, Google site verification. So text records are often used to authenticate that you own the DNS. So if, you, if you're asked by some company to put that in there, they're saying they're going to check that and say, okay, this is like if you're dealing with Microsoft 365 and doing email in there, you're going to put a record in here to confirm that you own that that DNS, that domain. Okay. So in RHEL 9, it looks like they moved the network file. It used to be in Etsy sysconfig slash network scripts, I believe. And there was a file for the Ethernet adapter, but now it's it's been moved. So let me show you where that is. If I can find it, Etsy Network Manager System Connections. So there we just switched into there, do an LL, and there you can see ENS one ninety two ENS one ninety two, which is what we saw. If you recall, right up here in the IP adder command, this is our Ethernet adapter. Okay, so we can see that. So let's do a cat ends 192, right? And I can't see it because, as you can see, the permissions read write for root only. So this is going to have to be sudo cat ends 192 and there you go so here's the connection id at ens 192 the uuid type is ethernet auto connect priority interface name there it is again and ethernet and then here it goes into the ipv4 so here's the address address one so you could have more than one address but this one has one address and 1010200.90 slash 24 and there is the default gateway so it's all on one line it's pretty clean i like that that it has both the ip slash 24 all contained in one line and then dns 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. we're just using the google dns for this 
method manual. That means it's a static IP address. This could also be set up as DHCP if you if it wasn't a server, but it, it's a server, so you're not going to usually use DHCP for a server. So, so the good a good, a good question right now is where is this DNS contained? So I can show you that if we look at cat etsy resolve.com and there it is so and you can see this was generated by network manager right so here we went into etsy network manager system con connections this is generated by network manager it writes it into this file into this etsy resolve.conf so that's where you're going to see your name servers so you could edit this if you wanted but it's going to it's probably not the best way since it's generated by network manager. Probably change it through that. Okay. So I think that we've gone through everything I wanted to talk to talk about in the network manager part or the network configuration part for Linux. So those are the important areas that you need to know. So I'd like to thank you for watching and hope you've enjoyed it.